Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Howdy, science! On today's show, we look into the two-party system. HCA Today starts now. I'm Izzy Wicks, and it is Thursday, February 1st, 2024. Today is the first day of Black History Month. All of our trivia videos this month will be themed around Black History. Here are the QR codes for the homecoming court. Vote for who you think should represent the student body as homecoming queen, king, prince, and princess. Voting ends Thursday, so vote fast. The High School Hollywood Homecoming Spirit Week is this week. Don't forget to follow the school's dress code. Today is Spirit Day. Show your stallion pride by wearing some stallion colors. There will be a pep rally in the gym recognizing the winter sports teams, as well as the homecoming court. Tomorrow will be red carpet day. Dress your best and get ready for the homecoming dance that evening. Varsity softball tryouts are Saturday, February 3rd at 10 a.m. at Stewart Field in Citizens Park by the batting cages across from the splash pad. Be ready and make sure you have all your equipment in the dugout, your shoes changed, and be on the field at 10 sharp. Tryouts will run for a minimum of two hours, possibly longer. It is mandatory for all players to stay until the end. Make sure the coaches have a contact number for each player. Finalized rosters and cuts will be made on the same day. All players will be contacted on the same day. You must have a signed physical, be on time, and have an athletic handbook. No participation and no makeup days for late or absent players without a valid excuse or proper documentation. Water will be provided. Take a look at the upcoming Horse Creek Academy sports matchups. They're on your screen now. Ah! Oh, thank you. If you want to give a conversation card to someone you love, you can purchase them this week at lunch. You can get them two for a dollar. They'll be on display at the homecoming dance Friday the 2nd. See you there. High school homecoming dance tickets are on sale during lunch. Forms can be picked up for current high school students who are not HDA students. Tickets will not be sold at the door of the day of the dance, so make sure you purchase them before then. Get ready, middle school students. Tomorrow you will nominate your choices for the Court of Hearts. The top three nominations for each category will be announced next week, and the winners will be announced at the Valentine's Dance on February 10th. We will crown a 6th grade Prince and Princess, a 7th grade Prince and Princess, and an 8th grade King and Queen. Nomination forms will be available during homeroom only on Friday. Tickets for the Middle School Valentine's Dance are on sale now. You may purchase your tickets during lunch for $5 using cash or check. Parents may also purchase tickets through middle school and high school office using a card. This is a semi-formal event, which will be held in the high school commons on February 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. Students are encouraged to dress their best. Hoodies, sweatpants, and leggings are a no-go, but we're welcoming dresses, skirts and blouses, dress pants, dress shirts, suits, and the optional ties for the extra touch of style. Dresses may be strapless, but may not have a plunging neckline. They cannot be shorter than the fingertip length. We ask that students avoid midriffs, see-through, or mesh materials that expose skin. Undergarments must not be visible. Several Horse Creek Media students participated in the C-SPAN Student Cam Documentary Contest. They were asked to produce a six-minute documentary covering something important from the past 20 years or something significant from the next 20 years. Today's episode, we have a documentary by Kaylin Dunn on the two-party system. I swear to freaking God, America is like a freaking joke, bro. They would just expect you guys to get this very basic function of your job done and fund the government. We're dysfunctional. It's just that simple. That simple. Stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold, stop it. Is that your solution? No, no, sit down. Sorry, Eric, sit down. Okay. You know, okay. you're okay. a okay. United States Senator. Sit down. Act. Act. Okay. Sit down. There have been several issues with the American government ever since it was founded. 
from our rule under the British Empire to the Articles of Confederation and finally to the two-party system we have in place today. One of our main problems is how dysfunctional it appears to be. An instance of our dysfunctionality appeared around September 2023 when we had threats of a government shutdown because nobody could come to an agreement over budgeting issues. Of course, people are different and disagreements are bound to occur. But the thing is, it's frightening to see whenever the people in power act so petulantly over things that don't matter, or worse, over things that do matter. Our government is dysfunctional and I'd like to see change in that over the next 20 years. But to gain a sense of our malfunctioning government, we first need to get an understanding of our two-party system. Britannica defines a two-party system as a political system in which the electorate gives its votes largely to only two major parties, and in which one or the other party can win a majority in the legislature. Let's examine its origins, starting from whenever we were granted our independence July 4th, 1776, when we needed a way to run our country. We came up with the Articles of Confederation, but because of how weak it was, it was no surprise that it ultimately failed. To aid this failure, a constitution was created, and two groups with opposing views on the Constitution appeared, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. This is the origin of America's very first political parties. Later on, after the death of the Anti-Federalists and the birth of the Democratic and Republican Party, George Washington warned against the continuation of political parties in his farewell address. However, political parties may now and then answer popular end. They are likely in the course of time and things to become potent engines, by which Cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will become enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engines which have lifted them to unjust dominion. Even Washington's successor, John Adams, felt so strongly to view them as evil. There is nothing which I dread so much as a division of the Republic into two great parties, each arranged under its leader and concerting measures in opposition to each other. This, in my humble apprehension, is to be dreaded as the greatest political evil under our Constitution. But we didn't heed their warnings, and we still continued on, which leads us to present day. But was it even necessary to heed their warnings? Do politicians today even believe that it's necessary to change or reform our government? I got together with two South Carolina representatives, and this is what they had to say on it. I'm not exactly sure what we can do to reform it since they're basically independent. With that being the case, I wish there was reform, but I don't know that there's anything that we can do in the uh, legislature regarding that. Uh I wish that we could work together more and it wasn't such a divide all the time. I would maybe get rid of our partisan system. Today we have a multitude of political parties, but there's two that have the limelight, Republicans and Democrats. The parties on stage have very polarizing views, which can be troublesome whenever trying to make an agreement on important issues. Perhaps an addition of another party could suit this issue, and according to the governing, 63% of Americans support this. But what do politicians think? I truly wish, though, that there was a third party mm -hmm. because not right now everything is so polarizing. I think so, but having um, them get elected, that's not, with the straight party ticket voting like we have it now, people go in and they just hit a Democrat ticket or a Republican ticket. When that happens, they don't get to see the Libertarian candidate or the Independent candidate show up on the ballot. So, American citizens have to suffer through what feels like a theatrical performance, watching some politicians bicker and fight like children over non-issues, or not be able to do some of the most basic parts of their job. Some of these behaviors could be because of their pride in their political party. And all their pride and preference can lead to issues such as gerrymandering, which could contribute to our dysfunctionality. Gerrymandering is rigging electoral maps to benefit um, a partisan body, um, one side or the other, or some other special interest group. Because this practice is so self-serving, it negatively affects the balance of power in government. Certain communities won't be represented in the way that they want or need to be, and communities of color are especially affected by this practice. Age could also play a part in the problem. Cognitive decline can begin in a person's middle adulthood but it really starts kicking in a person's 50s. Additionally, the youngest baby boomers are roughly 59 years old, 
and they make up a majority of Congress. Although we've addressed some of our issues, what now? Being somewhat self-aware is a good thing, but is there hope for our political future? Our voices matter, and in the next 20 years, I hope to see that our government becomes less dysfunctional, because we the people deserve that change. Thanks, Kaylin. That wraps up today's show. If you're in a high school and interested in the Horse Creek Media team for next school year, request Film and TV One during your IGP. See Mr. Chambers if you have any questions. Reporting for HCA Today, I'm Izzy Wicks, and it's a good day to have a good day.